New developments out of the BYU Duke story, where an African-American player for Duke made claims of being racially heckled throughout a volleyball match at BYU. Though after the match, no other witnesses could come forward to corroborate, and a handicapped man took the heat for the alleged slur spouting. Joining me now is one of the students who broke this side of the story, that is the founder of the Cougar Chronicle, member of BYU College Republicans and co-founder of BYU Conservatives, Tommy Stevenson. Tommy, thanks so much for coming on and talking about this, uh, uh, this charged story, racially charged story. Uh, set this up for the viewers here. Um, what exactly happened and where is this story today? What do we know? So as of right now, um, we know that BYU has done a full investigation on everything and hasn't found any evidence. But when the story broke, it was said that, well, where's what happened? The volleyball game happened. And then I think it was the next day or so, the uh, godmother tweeted out that her goddaughter had been called the N-word multiple times during this match every time she, she served. And then I know the father got in an ESPN did an interview talking about how Others joined in with this as well. Uh, and then BYU put out a statement about the whole thing. Uh, the athletic director even talked to the students the next day at a match and said that racism wasn't acceptable and all these different things happened and they ended up banning a guy who Duke accused after the game. So that was the cover story and it kind of ran on media, NPR, CNN, kind of nationally. And me and Luke, we run the Cougar Chronicle, and we even believed it because BYU, who, BYU had banned someone, so that was a point of credibility because the school had actually done something about it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you about that because, you know, if you're, you're covering news, right, for your school, mm -hmm. obviously this would be a, uh, a major story for your school. You have to go back. You have to talk to people, those fans that attended – because you have to corroborate this story. Was there anyone that heard this happen, or was it just this isolated to this one man, this handicapped individual? So no one else had heard anything about it happening. And upon further research, what we did is we actually had, because we put out a statement uh, from our Instagram page saying that, hey, we condemn all this, but don't use this as an excuse to push left-wing propaganda on campus. But then people started messaging us saying from the athletic department and a few others saying that, hey, this actually isn't what happened. This is a cover story. They banned someone because Duke pointed them out after the game. They didn't even point them out during the match when the complaint was initially given. Hmm. And because of that, we started doing more digging and found out more witnesses. Uh, and almost nobody wanted to put their name out there. We only got three people that were willing to do it who were in the student section just to claim that they didn't hear anything. Yeah. And there were people on the court that we talked to uh, and just various different people that hadn't heard this racial slur being said. And it was claimed that it had been said every single time she served. I want to play this really quick, and then I'll close with you. Basketball Hall of Famer and coach of the University of South Carolina's team, Don Staley, canceled their mm -hmm. game series with BYU um, after these claims, but then went on to give this response. Listen. Just I woke up with the same just gut feeling that I, sh I should not put our our players in that situation. I did not discuss it with our players. No, I didn't do it to, you know, condemn BYU. I did not do that. This was a selfish decision, you know, and that was I was only thinking about South Carolina women's basketball. Just final thoughts. Was the story true? Was it not true? Is it still gray? So it's, as described by Rachel Richardson, I mean, we leave the option that maybe she misheard something like cougar being said. Mm. But the way that was described, that it was repeatedly said, that other people started joining in. No witnesses after our investigation and BYU's investigation and so many other people, no one could come forward to corroborate this, not even audio from the game. And there were police reports because they assigned officers to sit by the student section and none of them had heard it either. Yeah. So there's no corroborating evidence, and uh, the grant, the godmother, who is actually running for office in Texas and has a history of anti-white tweets, just kind of took with it and ran, and this yeah. is the result. People are trying to cancel BYU now. Yeah, racial slurs obviously not accepted in any circle, in any form. Um, however, 
there is an obligation for journalists to find the truth and the fact in this. Um, and again, as decisions are made, as you heard from the South Carolina coach pulling uh, her team out. So um, whether it's true, whether it's not, decisions still being made based on that. Tommy Stevenson, who broke that part of the story, joining us live there from BYU. Thank you so much, Tommy. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. September is historically the worst performing month for the stock market, so you better be ready for it. The Fed continues to aggressively raise rates, and J.P. Morgan is forecasting another mega rate hike September the 21st. Is that why Jamie Dimon said an economic hurricane is coming our way? Well, gold and silver have remained remarkably stable despite the Fed aggressively raising rates today. The Patriot Gold Group has a special incentive for Newsmax viewers. Huge! Now precious metals investors can enjoy the No Fee for Life Gold and Silver IRA on qualifying rollovers or enjoy free, discreet, insured shipping on all direct gold and silver purchases. Here's the number, 800-356-4470. Call 800-356-4470 today. 